so let us get into today's lesson. Sorry, I had a bit of a brain fart there, but it's all good. We're, we're going on. So what we're going to have a look at today are sort of performing basic operations with um, the whole numbers that we've been speaking about, or the whole numbers and the integers that we spoke about on Tuesday. So we need to be mindful or be careful that when we are performing operations, we need to do it in a very specific order. We can't just somewhat do what we want when we want, because otherwise we're going to get the wrong answer. Um, and so the order in which we do our work is very, very important. So we're going to get to that in a second. But my first question to you are, no, my first question to you is, if we think about algebra and algebraic expressions, what are terms? What, what are terms in an algebraic expression? And I know that those of you who were with me last year know this answer because I distinctly remember doing this. So I know some of you know what terms are. So anyone with a hand or an answer in the chat? What is a term or what are terms? How do I identify terms? I know you guys know this. Okay, I'm seeing some answers coming through. We're getting there, very nice. Okay, guys, we're on the right track. We're not quite there, but we're on the right track. So when we think about um, expression, so firstly, let us just consider what an algebraic expression is. An expression is almost like a sentence in maths. It's giving me information about a specific problem, a specific scenario. It's a sentence. So an expression is a combination of terms, essentially. Terms make up an expression. So we can just say here, to, if I could spell, that's also a useful tool. Terms make up. Right, so when we talk about terms making up an expression, we can get um, expressions with one term, two terms, three terms, 20 terms, however many terms we want. And so terms then are the words of this mathematical sentence. So terms, and very importantly, we need to be able to identify terms. Terms are, I'm gonna say for lack of a better word, the words of our mathematical sentence. which remember is basically our expression. And we need to know that terms are separated by plus and minus signs. That's very important when we start to do our operations. Okay, so for example, if I gave you the term x squared plus 3x plus 2, every time I see a plus sign, I know that that is indicating for me a new term. So x squared would be one term, 3x would be a second term, the constant two would be my third term. So this would be a three-termed or what we call a three-termed expression or what we call a trinomial. I'm sure some of you guys have heard trinomial before. So terms are basically the the parts of my expression or the things that make up the expression, which are separated either by a plus or a minus sign. Okay, now again, we need to know what terms are because when we start to do our operations, it's very important that every term that we're working with is simplified. We're gonna get to that in a second. I've also just realized that I have answered my own question in <laughs> that second step. So where I've said, how do we identify terms? We identify terms by seeing where the plus and minus signs are, and that separates my term. Now, terms can be anything. Terms can be a constant. 
Terms can be a coefficient and a variable. Terms can be a variable squared. Terms can be a coefficient, a variable, and an exponent. As long as they are then separated by plus and minus signs, we have got multiple terms. Okay. So that's the first sort of thing we need to know before we start simplifying expressions. The next thing that we need to do now, I'm going to be honest, I don't really use bod mass and I actually don't like bod mass. I prefer bed mass. Some of you use bod mass, which is cool. I've got no issues. I'm going to use bed mass. I don't really like bed mass either, but because I know most of us do use bed mass or bod mass, we're going to go with that. Apparently, I want to minimize my screen. Um, so what I will do for those of you that are more comfortable with bod mass, it's bod mass or bed mass. Um, bed mass is a little bit more explanatory and a little bit easier to work with, in my opinion, if you're going to use the, the acronym, but really whatever works for you. So can anyone explain to me what bed mass or bod mass is? Eddie? Ma'am, isn't it your basic math rules? Okay, and what do you mean like, by math rules? Like your brackets and things in order? Perfect, exactly. So as Eddie's told us, these are the basic rules that we need to follow when we perform our operations. I do realize I did not stay long enough here to take a screenshot. So I'm just going to go back here for everyone to take a screenshot. And then we're going to carry on with what Eddie was saying now to us. And as Amatli has put on the um, chat there, bed mass basically is our order of operations, the order in which we need to complete our operations. From oh, English, from Kailway has put out our bod mass for us beautifully. And I'm going to write it all down now. I'm hoping we've all taken a screenshot of this. I'm going to move. Okay, so. Bod mass, bed mass, whichever you want is basically your order of work or your order of operations. Okay, so as we've got there in the chat, B stands for brackets. Essentially, anything inside a bracket, if you can simplify it, you need to simplify it. So, for example, if we had three x plus, no, no, that's a poor example. Let me try that again. If we had x plus x plus three plus four, for example, if we can simplify what's going on in that bracket, we want to. So we know x plus x is two x, and then we've got the plus three. And now because we've actually dealt with the brackets, the brackets can fall away. We don't need to stress about them because everything I needed to do there was simplified. If this bracket had a coefficient, we would want to distribute our coefficient into our bracket and then only do our brackets fall away for us. Okay, so brackets essentially means deal with the bracket part of your expression first. We're gonna do some examples, so I'm just gonna take that nonsense off. Right, the O if you're using bod mass is of, and the reason I don't really like that is because of can be a bit confusing. So I use bed mass in terms of if there are exponents, we then need to deal with the exponents. So for example, if we had something like 2x to the power of 2 plus 4, yes, there's brackets that I need to deal with, but there's only one term in this bracket. And so what I'm actually concerning myself with is dealing with that exponent, that squared. And so I first deal with that before I then continue to simplify my expression. So I prefer bed mass if you were gonna use, and I wanna say it's called an acronym, I'm not actually 100% sure, I think it's an acronym. Um, because, thank you, Melissa, because um, it reminds us that we need to deal with exponents if we have them. But the next four then quite straightforward. D is for division, M for multiplication, a for addition and S for subtraction. Clearly my mouth works faster than my hand. 
Right, and essentially, as I want to say, a matle, but let me not say nonsense. As a matle told us, this gives us the order in which our operation should be performed. Right, so this almost indicates for you a level of importance. Brackets and exponents, that has to happen first. You cannot do the addition and the subtraction before you've dealt with brackets or exponents. So essentially, this is sort of level one of importance. It is the most important thing to first deal with. Then we move on to level two. If we've got division and multiplication, we can deal with that next. And only right after we have finished with our brackets, our exponents, our division, our multiplication, do we move on to addition and subtraction? And so what this shows you is that division and multiplication sort of have an equal standing. You don't, if you've got a sum with both division and multiplication, you don't have to do division first. It's not like a major thing. But if you've got a division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction, the division and multiplication must happen before the addition and subtraction. So the order in which we do things, very, very important. Um, I see Tundal's message. Tundal, I'm going to be honest, I've never heard the O's order. Um, maybe I'm just way too old now. I always learned odd mass as brackets of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. I stand to be corrected. Like I said, I don't actually use odd mass. It's not my favorite thing in the world. But um, okay, at least it's making me feel better here, right? Uh. <laughs> yeah. So O is of. Yeah, Eddie asked to take a screenshot of what he missed. I think your previous work from okay. this. Okay, I shall go on back. Um, so let's do that so that we've basically got everything there and you guys can take a screenshot of everything that we've done so far and then we're going to do some examples to practice this stuff okay we all got screenshots last three seconds one, two, three. Okay, so let us practice some examples. So guys, remember addition and subtraction and multiplication and division have the same level of importance to each other. Addition and subtraction are equally important. Multiplication and division equally important. Now, because I'm fairly confident that you guys could probably do this pretty much in your sleep, we're gonna go quick, quick. Raise your hands if you wanna give me answers as we go along. If you aren't being 100% comfortable with the addition and subtraction, draw a number line for yourself. I think I say this almost every single time we're doing anything with addition and subtraction. Draw a number line for yourself and work with your number line. I just want to do the first one, question A of subtraction and addition with you guys, just to show you how you would use a number line if you are feeling a little bit uncomfortable. And guys, the reason the number line is so useful is because if you are being told, If you are being told to do these addition and subtraction calculations without a calculator, a number line is quite useful. So in question A, we have got five minus seven. So we would start at five. We want to take seven away. So we're gonna to move towards the negatives, four, five, six, seven. And where I stop is my answer. So five minus seven is negative two. So that's how we use a number line. Okay, does anyone want to give me then B of addition and subtraction? We've got 4 plus 2 minus 5. And Paul, tell me. 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. Minus 5 is equal to 1. Perfect. Okay, so guys, what I'm did there was really nice in terms of you can break it down for yourself. There's no expectation for you to do it all in one go. If you're more comfortable working with the plus first and then the minus, that's fine. Because remember, addition and subtraction have the same level of importance to each other. Okay, 
if you, for whatever reason, decided you wanted to do the subtraction first, two minus five is negative three, and then you would have four plus minus three, which is four minus three, which still gives you one. That's a lot more complicated. But the point is, addition and subtraction have the same level of importance. Right, who wants to try C for me? Negative six plus two plus five. Amathle, tell me. Um, two plus five is equal to seven. And then you say negative six plus seven, which is one. Excellent. And I really like the way Amathle did that there. So Amathle left the negative six and decided to do the addition first, which gave her plus seven. And then negative six plus seven gives me positive one. Again, you don't have to do the addition first, <clears throat> but you can. Completely up to you. Right, Eddie, I see your hand. Do you want to do D for us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, tell me. So I did the addition first. I said that two plus five equals seven, and then, uh, oh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, I meant the wrong way. <laughs> I meant to say that I first did the addition. I said two plus six, which gives you your um, eight, and then I took away the 11 from that, and then I got negative seven. Okay, so just be careful, it's a negative two. Okay, I think Eddie's left us. So Eddie was completely, absolutely 100%, but just careful, it's a negative two. So if we start with the negative two plus six, that's English, that gives me four. And then if we say, <laughs> if we say four minus 11, we get a negative seven. And so here our answer is negative seven. Right, uh, Zembo, I do see your question to take a screenshot. I haven't actually really done too much of the first column yet. So let me finish the first column and then I'll make it a bit smaller and you can screenshot all of them. Right, who wants to try E? Negative five minus four plus one. Remember, use your number line if you're not feeling too comfortable with these negatives. If you want, I'll draw a number line here for us. This would be helpful if I drew a number line big enough. Um, Kelly, you can definitely try. Do you want to raise your hand? Um, let me oh, see. You already put me on unmute. Okay. Um, I would first like to calculate four plus one, which is five. Okay, so remember it's a negative four. Negative four. Oh, so should I calculate minus five minus four first? I would, yeah, that might be a little bit easier. Uh, minus five, minus four. Is it minus nine? Excellent. And then uh, four plus one is five. So nine plus five is 14. Okay, so just be careful. Once you've done the minus five and the minus four, so once you said negative five minus four and you've got negative nine, you're done with those terms. And so all you're left with here is negative nine plus one. And negative nine plus one is then a negative eight. eight. Okay, very nice. Well done. Thank you. Alrighty, guys, so this one was a little bit tricky and my number line was absolutely shocking. So we're just going to pretend I didn't do that because it really wasn't great. 
And I'm rather going to just take this number line and work with that because clearly I can't draw a number line tonight, which is fine. You know, we all have our weak moments. So if we go back to this original sum that we had, we had a negative five to start off with. We then had to subtract four. So I'm moving towards the negative side of my number line. One, two, three, four. So now I'm sitting at that negative nine. There's the negative nine that we are sitting at. But I've dealt with this. I've dealt with this. I still need to add one to my expression. And so now from negative nine, I'm going to start adding. So I'm going towards the positive side of my number line. And I'm going to add one, which leaves me at a negative eight. Hence my answer, negative eight. So again, number lines are very useful to yourself. Yeah, that's right. And once you have dealt with a term, so once you've said minus five, minus four, you've dealt with those terms. It is done. It's negative nine. We have dealt with them. You can then carry on with the rest of your expression. Okay, very nice. Okay, well done. Um, Amakli, I still see your hand up. Do you have a question before I carry on or before I let you screenshot? Nope. No problem, Matley. Okay, so guys, I'm going to make this a touch smaller so that you can screenshot this or this first column here. Remember, this was the addition and subtraction column. Let's just move that down so we can all see that. There we go, addition and subtraction. And then we're going to have a look at our multiplication and division. Again, I know you guys can probably go through it really quickly we're going to try all right five seconds and then i'm going to make it bigger again for the multiplication and division eddie do you have a question ma'am i just want to know if i can answer a for you okay give me two seconds and then i'll get you to answer it oh, sorry okay screenshots done right so let's have a look at this multiplication and division so eddie's going to help us with the first one which is eight times two Okay, ma'am, so it's going to be 16. Fantastic. Right, so guys, eight times two, 16. You're essentially adding eight twice or you're adding two eight times, however you choose to look at it, but eight times two, 16. Very nice. See, Zordwa put it on the chat there as well. Well done. Right, B, who wants to help me with this? B is negative six and remember guys brackets when there's nothing in between a bracket and a number it means multiplication so this is just a really weird way of saying negative six times positive three lawrence what do you think um and my thing is going to be negative 80 Okay, fantastic. Can you explain to me why it's negative? Yes. Why when I say negative six times positive three, do I get a negative? Uh, maybe can you repeat that question again? Okay, so why when I say a negative times a positive, do I get a negative answer? Okay, don't stress, don't you worry. Um, Lawrence has given us the correct answer there. Negative 18, and I don't know if my mental math there for a second. Remember guys, when we have got a negative value being multiplied by a positive value, we end up with a negative. So I know a lot of you have learned like this love to hate, hate to love thing. I, I don't really know. Some of you have learned it, some of you have other ways of remembering it completely up to you. Um, but remember that when we are multiplying and we have got different signs or even the same sign, we need to be very, very careful of what the answer sign should be. Okay, very nice. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Mikle, Amatle, you put that in on the chat there as well. Very nicely done, well done. Question C. 
Now, please be careful. We've got a negative in front of my fraction. So this is negative 25 over or being divided by five, because remember, a fraction means division. So we have negative 25 divided by five. Mulemo, what is the answer for C? Um, the answer for C is negative five. Fantastic, well done. Now guys, the same thing sort of applies with division. If we've got a negative divided by a positive, we get a negative. So those sign rules apply for both multiplication and division. So just remember that when we are doing multiplication and division. Right, last two, let's see. Uh, D, just be careful. Once again, we've got some fractions going on here. There's a multiplication happening between the top numbers or my numerators. So I've got a negative three times a negative six divided by a negative two. So think carefully. Edie's given us a hint there in the chat. So what this is saying to us is negative three times negative six divided by a negative two. Liking what I'm seeing so far? Murutando, do you wanna try? Yes, ma'am. Hey, tell me. So ma'am, I think that negative three times negative six equals to 18. Fantastic. And then 18 divided by a negative two equals to a negative nine. Wonderful, excellent, well done. Right, so Noru Tando explained that beautifully. I don't even think I need to repeat it. Negative nine is our answer there. And once again, do it in steps. I do not expect, and we do not expect as teachers that you look at that and you give your answer straight away. Work out what's going on in the numerator, then deal with the denominator. Do it step by step for yourselves, for yourselves. I don't know what that word was. Right, last one. Amatle, do you want to try the last one for us? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, negative three times negative three is nine. Then you say two times nine, which is 18. Wonderful. So again, guys, um, remember that the order in which you multiply things doesn't matter. Two times three is exactly the same thing as three times two. Four times eight is exactly the same thing as eight times four. So choosing to first deal with the multiplication of the negatives is cool. Deal with those negatives being multiplied by each other. Sort out your signs and then deal with the rest of your multiplication. Right, so I'm going to make this side smaller so that you can take a screenshot should you want to. Let's just move this down so we can make it a touch bigger. All right, it's going to fight with me. Right, so that was our multiplication and division. Remember that multiplication happens when we've got two brackets next to each other, like we did in D. Multiplication also happens when there's a coefficient to the bracket. That coefficient can sometimes be at the end of the bracket, doesn't matter. And remember your signs when multiplying and dividing. And in this last one here, we had a negative times a negative, which gave us a positive answer. So we are looking positive, but it's positive. Okay, take your screenshots. We're gonna have a quick break before we continue on. Okay, so this brain break, a little bit of a, I don't wanna say magic trick, that's not really what it is, but you need to read the clues and using our hundred squares, you need to figure out what the number is. You also have a joke there if you wanna enjoy that. What did the shark say when he ate the clownfish? This tastes a little funny. I thought that was a good one. 
my jokes are very corny very very corny Okay, so Zembo, I will go back to that in a second. Um, let's finish the brain break and then I will go back up for you to take a screenshot of everything. And I'll put everything up so you can get it all at the same time. Cecilia? Um, Ma'am, can I please take a screenshot of the previous work that we were doing just now? Okay, so seeing as multiple people are asking, let me quickly go back to the work. And we'll do this so that you can get everything all at once. And then I'll go back to the brain break. So guys, that's both addition and subtraction there. Take the screenshots that you've got it. I'm gonna give you two more seconds to do that. Okay, moving on, or oh, moving back rather. Okay, so your eight clues to guess the number, the number is greater than nine, the number is not a multiple of 10, um, the number is a multiple of seven, the number is odd, the number is not a multiple of 11, the number is less than 200. The ones digit is larger than its tens digit. And the tens digit is odd. Getting a mixed bag here, I like it. Read them carefully. If you don't know what any of those terms mean, just ask. Molemo? No? <laughs> okay, guys, so let's let's have a think here. So the first clue says the number is greater than nine. So basically I can ignore all of those top numbers there because it has to be bigger than nine. The second clue for us says the number is not a multiple of 10. Okay, now multiples, remember, are basically our times tables. So if it's not a multiple of 10, it can't be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Can't be any of those. Then it tells us that the number is a multiple of seven. So I actually don't like that. I've made that choice. Let's do a highlighter. If it is a multiple of seven, it can be any of the answers to our seven times tables. So 17 is already out the window. 14, 21, 28. Let's see how good my seven times tables are. 35, 42, 49, 56. And this is where it starts to get a bit dodgy for me. 70 is already out the window. 77, 84, 91, 98. So those green highlighted ones, we're okay with them. It has to be a multiple of seven. The next thing that it tells me is that the number is odd. Okay. So if I look at the ones I've highlighted, the odd ones are 21. 35, 49, 63, 77, 91, and that's it. So it's an odd number. The next thing it tells me is that this number is not a multiple of 11. So all of the multiples of 11 ignore. So that would be 11, 22, 33, blah, blah, blah. So if you kind of look, all of my multiples 11 are actually along a diagonal that I clearly can't draw. 11, 22, 44, 55, et cetera, et cetera. So the only multiple 11 of I have, that was shocking. The only multiple of 11 that I have is 77. 
So we can cross that out because it's not a multiple of 11. Multiple of 11, English. Woo. The next thing that it says is that the number is less than 200. Well, that's nice to know. All of these numbers are less than 200. So that was a bit of a pointless one. Okay. The next thing it tells me is that the ones digit is larger than its tens digit. Now, this relies on us actually knowing what that means. So if we take the number, let's say 52, this is my tens digit, this is my unit digit. So this is saying a unit, or we can say one digit, it doesn't really matter. The ones digit is larger than the tens digit. So basically, this second number must be bigger than the first number. So something like 25, we'd be okay with. So if we go through all the ones that we've highlighted in the green and the yellow, we want the ones digit larger than the tens digit. So that crosses our 21. 35 is fine, 49 is fine. 63 is not fine, 91 is not fine. So now we're between 35 and 49. The last one that we're given here is that the tens digit is odd. So now we go to the tens digit, the first one, and we want it to be odd. That is then 35 because 49, the tens digit is even. So 35 is our answer here. Right, so this, whilst a little bit tedious, helps us work with the language that we need to know in terms of maths, in terms of things like multiples, um, understanding when it's saying greater than, less than, and also understanding our place units of a number. Okay, so guys, this is our brain break. Just for those of you that maybe were a bit confused, the brain break is just a little break we take before we carry on with our, our maths. Eddie? Now, I just want to ask if Ma'am can quickly like undo the annotations. I want to take a screenshot of this. I want to like ask my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it now for you. I'll take them all off. Okay, if anyone wants to screenshot it with the answers, do it quickly now. Otherwise, I'm going to take this all off and let you take a screenshot of the blank one if you want. Three, two, one, goodbye. Okay, there we go. If you want the blank one, you can take a screenshot. Okay. Right, so let us move on to um our next what am i on about our next set of questions so guys brain breaks just to clarify is a break from what we're doing you don't have to stress about them i expect you to give them a try because it makes your brain work a little bit differently to what we're doing um but it's really just like a fun little break that we take before we carry on okay so now we actually want to combine all of the operations that we've spoken about to be able to answer multiple termed expressions. Oh, golly, Miss Molly. So let's have a look at our first one here, A. First question to you guys is how many terms does this expression have? We've got seven minus bracket four minus nine close bracket. So how many terms does this expression have? You can just put it in the chat if you want. You're also welcome to raise your hand. How many terms? I hope you announced your name right. Uh, we. Well, how many terms do you think? I think there are two terms, Miss. Excellent, well done. Okay, so guys, this is a bit of a trick one in the sense that because of the bracket having two terms in it already, we sometimes get confused. When we are trying to identify terms, we look at the expression as a whole. 
So yes, there's two minus signs, but inside the bracket, I'm not actually concerned how many terms there are. I care about the whole expression. So here, this minus sign is separating term one, which is the seven, and term two, which is the entire bracket. Inside my bracket, I have two terms. However, my expression as a whole, I'm only working with two terms. So don't stress if you said three, it is a bit of a, I don't want to say a trick question, but it is one that we struggle with. So don't worry, just bear in mind that we don't care about the terms inside the bracket, we're looking at the expression as a whole. Okay, so now we want to actually go and simplify this. So remember your bed mass, I'll write it up here in case you just need a reminder. We want to deal with those brackets first. So I'm going to leave the seven and I'm going to leave the minus. I'll deal with those in a second. Let's deal with that bracket. So this bracket, and if you want to, you can leave the brackets in just to make sure that there's no sign consideration that you need to make. And you'll see what I'm saying now in a second. We want to deal with the bracket. So four minus nine. I'm not even going to attempt to draw a number line again because clearly I couldn't do that. If you draw a number line, if you use a calculator, whatever your heart desires, when you subtract nine from four, you're going to get a negative five. Oops. Right, now this is what I was saying in terms of you can keep your brackets there in case there's a sign thing that you need to consider because now we've got a negative negative. We've got a double negative situation going on here. Now, some of you can look at that and you know exactly what you need to deal with. However, bear in mind that in front of this bracket, there is actually a one. We don't write it in because a coefficient of one we never need to stress about, but there is actually a one there. And so technically what is happening here is we've got a negative one times a negative five. And then we know how to deal with that. We know that a negative times a negative gives me a positive. And so I can deal with my sign from there. Eddie? Ma'am, is the answer 12? Perfect, exactly. So we've got the seven, negative one times negative five gives us a positive five. And as Eddie's just told us, if I add seven and five together, I get a positive 12. So be very careful. Once you've simplified your bracket, always double check that there is no um, sign that you need to take note of before you carry on. Sometimes there isn't, and sometimes you can just move on. But just bear in mind that sometimes we need to be careful of the signs. Sandal, do you have a question before we carry on? Uh, Ma'am, I just wanted to find out where did the minus one come from? Okay, so oh, the minus one comes from the fact that anytime I have a bracket in expression or a variable in an expression, there is always an imaginary or a, I call it a ghost one sitting in front of it. I don't have to write it in, but I need to remember that it's there. Now you don't have to think about the negative one. As long as you know that the two negatives together create a positive, I'm not too stressed if you don't think of it as a negative one. But the reason we've got that situation is because we have a negative one times a negative five, which then creates the situation where we've got a negative times a negative. So um, anytime. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay, so guys, the answer is positive 12. Reason being is because those two negatives became a positive. So we had a positive seven plus five. So everything is positive, which means my answer is positive. So positive 12. Right, I want to try one more. I just want to, I've got quite a few here. So I just want to see which one I want to try. Um, let's. Right, let's try F because there's a division there and multiplication. Right, first question to you, and I want you to look at this very, very carefully. How many terms are in this expression? Think about what separates terms. 
how many terms are in the expression. Okay, so so far no one agrees. We've got four, three, and two. Five, two, five, two, three, two. Okay. Oui, what do you think? Um, ma'am, I think there are four terms. Five what? or four. Okay. So guys, let's have a seat. Will you remind me what separates terms? Um, the, um, Which signs? The negative signs. Good. The positive and the negative signs separate our terms. Okay, so I've got a negative there and I have a negative there. Fair enough. However, remember that negative's in a bracket. So technically what I have here because apparently I want a G. Technically what I have going on here is a negative three times a negative two times a four divided by six. Because we've got times, times and divide, those don't separate terms. That is all one term. We could write this as five minus three times negative two times four, divided by six. We could write this as one fraction, as one term. And so technically here, this actually only has two terms in it. I know it's a little bit confusing, but because of the um, operations I'm dealing with, um, I actually only have two terms here. Right, so if we now go and deal with this, I'm gonna leave the five for a second because I wanna deal with all of those brackets and the multiplication and stuff before I deal with subtraction. So if we look at the numerator, three times negative two is a negative six and negative six times positive four is a negative 24. So all I'm doing, sorry, is multiplying the terms in my exponent, in my exponent, in my numerator. Then I still want to deal with the division. So I'm going to leave the five and the minus there for a second. I'm going to pop it into brackets just in case I have to deal with a sign. I don't know what's happening, sorry. We've got a negative divided by a positive, which we know is a negative. So I've got a negative value here. And we know that 24 divided by six is four. Again, I have this negative negative situation. And so what we actually have here is a five plus four which gives me nine. So guys, very important is for you to deal with your operations in the order in which you should be doing it, in the order that bed mass tells us to. If you don't, we are not going to get the correct answer. Right, so please take a screenshot of this. I'll quickly go back to the other one to, um, for you to take a screenshot. And then we are going to send you that quiz link Remember, guys, the quiz is not something to stress about. It's not something that you need to get um, anxious about or anything like that. It is just for you to practice the concepts that we've been chatting about over the last two days. So the number system and then some basic operations. Okay, just quickly, um, where did I get the 24? The 20 ca 24 came from the multiplication of those three numbers. Three times negative two is negative six, and negative six times four is then negative 24. So it came from multiplying the numbers in my numerator. Right, I'm hoping we've all taken screenshots. So Zembo, thank you very much. It is quite short, um, but it's so hot here that I just decided to chop it all off. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go back to A for those of you that wanted to take a screenshot and then we will do the quiz link for you to grab in the chat 